Over here with Danny Jacobs talking about his pro debut. Ooh. Danny Jacobs about his pro debut Ooh. out here. Ooh. Yeah, no. So my pro debut was out here. We were talking about Vegas and how about my foreign Vegas. So I had my pro debut here. I had like maybe 10 different fights out here. Oscar De La Hoya on the cars. Pacquiao on the cars. Man, we've been fortunate to do a lot. You know what I'm saying? But shit ain't over now, man. We're going to beat the Triple G fight. Yeah. So what's up with that Triple G fight, though? We're working on it now. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all about the motherfucking money. <laughs> so let the money get right and shit. We can do what we do right now. It's just. So how you feel about that Triple G fight? Like, I, I understand it's early and you guys right. are trying to get the... But what is your mindset as far as a fight like that? I've seen him fight a few times, man. Tough yeah, dude. He's a tough guy. I think um, you just, that's boxing though. Boxing is tough. And when you got a guy like that, I mean, he's probably going to be one of my toughest opponents to date, amateur and professional. So this is the moment that I've been working for my whole career, my whole life. It's exciting. It's a little nerve wracking, but it's exciting at the same time. Okay. Once it happened, I mean, History is going to be made, I can guarantee you that. All right, I, I was fortunate to go to uh, in one of your last fights against yeah. Peter Quillen. That was a big fight out there in Brooklyn, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, how did it feel to be, like, the main event in Brooklyn, your hometown, in a place like the Barclay? I, I can't even explain it to you because you got to think about it. Mike Tyson, Zab Judas, uh, uh, Riddick Bowe, Shannon Britt, all these guys never had an opportunity to headline a car in Brooklyn. And I was able to do that against another guy, and it was for the Brooklyn Dragon Rights too. So, you know, it's special. All right. So, um, you know, you had a couple. Everybody goes through struggle through their, you know, career and stuff like that, man. Why don't you just tell us some about some of the things, mistakes you think you made, like in the ring, that you could that you could get better, like the things you yeah, work on the camp. Make mistakes. Boxing, you can always go back and say, I could have done that different. I couldn't have done that different. I mean, every time out. You always got to go back to the drawing board and fix something different. Every fight is different. Every fighter is different. Everybody poses a different threat. So you're not always going to have the same performances. As long as you make sure that you're fine-tuned and you can do what's necessary to win. I mean, it ain't always going to be pretty, but I'd rather an ugly win than a pretty loss. That makes sense. I feel you on that. I'm the king of pretty losses. <laughs> We're talking, huh? I'm the king of pretty losses. Yeah. You know That's Jay over there. Like, that's that's like you right? it don't mean nothing at all. Yeah. So, yo, why don't you, I mean, you know, obviously, g my brother or whatever, man. Why don't you talk about, like, how you know g and how y'all dudes go yo, back? Yo, brother. j my brother. What are you talking about? J I knew j since I was a kid, man. j was one of the only dudes that kind of genuinely took me over the shoulder and just guided me, like, you know taught me this, taught me that, talked to me. Um, just having that big brother feel, because always is it, I was always in the gym. I mean, I had family, you know, but my life was the gym. So to have somebody kind of share that, who've already kind of experienced it, it was cool. You know, he really, j is the reason why I'm probably as nice as I am now. You know what I'm saying? I was just telling him the other day, uh, I sparred more rounds with him in my life than any one person. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? That's it's like, true. we probably did real talk. People say, oh, I did thousands of rounds with that uh, guy, and this is exaggerating. Yeah, yeah. I can really say, I did thousands <laughs> of rounds with this guy. <laughs> the thing that makes me feel good <laughs> is, back in the day, I used to think, damn, this dude could fucking hit hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I never told nobody. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't perceived that way. He was, he was like a boxer, you yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Uh -huh. and he didn't step to nobody. Yeah. He outboxed everybody. Uh -huh. So I, in my whole image of criminal, this guy hits fucking hard, yo. He's not <laughs> knocking nobody out. What's wrong with me? Right, right, right. And then finally when you turn pro, you start stretching everybody. I'm like, no, I wasn't crazy. You know what I'm saying? Right, you right. You probably should have told me. Yeah, yo. That's crazy. He's like, okay, he's not saying nothing. You know what I'm You probably should have told me I was a puncher. Yo, you were a puncher. You know what I was knocking these guys out? I was like, yo, it must be the speed. I was like, it must be the speed. Shit, I ain't got that much power to be knocking these guys out. Let me tell you something. I'm not like, I never heard nobody say that much in my life. So I ain't gonna be with the punk nigga. Oh, yo, you got the punk. Meanwhile, we ain't gonna cut two, three times around. 